Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm posting a video after a long time and I hope you've been spending your time well in this lockdown. In this video, we'll see a story about a Zen master and we'll see what we can learn from it. Okay, so there was a great uh, Zen master who was in charge of the Mayukagi monastery and he used to have a cat and he really loved the cat a lot. One could even say that the cat was his true passion in life. So one day during his meditation classes, he brought the cat along with him and kept it by his side in order to make the most of its company. One morning, uh, the Zen master, who was already quite old, passed away. His best disciple took his place. Now the question was, what shall we do with the cat? The new master decided to allow the cat to continue attending the Zen Buddhist classes. Some disciples from the neighboring monasteries, traveling through those parts, discovered that in one of the region's most renowned temples, a cat took part in the meditation sessions. And this story began to spread. Many years passed, the cat died. But as the students at the monastery were so used to its presence, they found another cat. Meanwhile, the other temples began introducing cats in their meditation sessions. They believed that the cat was truly responsible for the fame and excellence of the Mayukagi's teaching. A generation passed and technical treatises began to appear about the importance of a cat in Zen meditation. Sometime later, a university professor developed a thesis which was accepted by the academic community that felines have the ability to increase human concentration and eliminate negative energy. And so for the whole century, the cat was considered as an indispensable part of Zen studies. Until a master appeared who was allergic to animal hair and decided to remove the cat from the daily exercises with the students. There was a fierce negative reaction, but the master insisted. Since he was an excellent instructor, the students continued to make the same progress, despite the absence of the cat. Little by little, the monasteries, always in search of new ideas, and already tired of having to feed so many cats, began eliminating the animals from the classes. In 20 years, new evolutionary theories began to appear, with very convincing titles, such as the importance of meditating without a cat, or balancing the Zen universe by willpower alone, without the help of animals. Another century passed and the cat withdrew completely from the meditation rituals in the region but 200 years were necessary for everything to return to normal because during all this time, no one asked why the cat was there. All right, so that was the end of the story. Now let's see all the things that went wrong and what are the lessons that we can learn from them. All right, so the first thing that went wrong was the idolization. The students had made an idol out of the Zen master and therefore everything that he would do would be deemed to be something more than normal and it would be thought to be something extraordinary. So when the Zen master brought his cat along with him, he had just brought it to keep company. But because of the student's idolization, the students assumed that there is something more to it. And therefore, they started thinking that the cat really did play an important role in the meditation. This usually happens when you idolize someone. You stop asking the right questions and you take everything that comes with them so to develop yourself as a human being, you must understand that blindly following someone leads to the destruction of your own individual self. If you like someone's qualities, then you must think for yourself. If you think you agree with them and only then you should take those qualities. Now, the second mistake that I felt was when the student, the best disciple of the master failed to break a behavioral pattern. Now, I believe that if he was indeed the best student of his master, he should have known that his master would never really bring a cat to improve meditation. If he would have understood what the master said in the classes, then he would never do such an act. And because he never really understood his master, he was unable to break a pattern of behavior. And so the second mistake was committed by the best disciple by continuing to keep the cat. Now, as we go further into the story, we see that other temples also began introducing cats in their meditation sessions. So this highlights another human behavior and that is envy. So now the other temples started thinking that this was really the secret of the Mayukagi's teaching. And so even they started blindly following the ritual. 
So this teaches us that when you see someone else's success, you must not start blindly copying them because you don't know half the story of what is happening. And sometimes this may lead to dangerous consequences as well. And I feel that when someone starts imitating someone out of pure envy, there is a huge amount of self-doubt. There is a huge amount of uh, lack of self-confidence in that person. Someone who is comfortable with themselves, someone who has belief in their potential, they would never start copying someone else. So if you identify yourself doing that, you should stop yourself that very moment. When the story started to spread, other temples began as well. And so now, after one generation, there were technical treatises that began to appear. They started highlighting the importance of cats in Zen meditation. Uh, here I'd like to quote uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle when he amazingly said, It is a capital mistake to theorize before one has data. Insensibly, one begins to twist facts to suit theories instead of theories to suit facts. We can't agree more. What happened was none of these people had access to the proper facts. And in this situation, the proper fact was that the master had just brought a cat to keep company. There was nothing more to it. Everyone started to follow. When everybody started to follow, nobody asked the correct questions. When nobody asked correct questions, it became a ritual. And when it became a ritual, they never really cared about the real facts. Now further on in the story, we see that there's a twist. There's a new master, but he's allergic to animal hair. And therefore he decides to remove the cat. Now we'll see two different kinds of reactions. The first reaction was by the students. The story says that there was a fierce negative reaction. Now here we see that when there's an established system, people never really like to change. They are afraid of change. But like we've discussed in earlier videos, change is inevitable. Change is the only thing that is constant. And so there was a negative reaction and they started thinking that their meditation depends somehow on the cat and they became very insecure. It's really surprising to see the effect that one act has over the minds of people. Just because one Zen master brought a cat, years and years later, students think that their meditation depends on the cat. They forgot the true meaning of Zen. They forgot the true meaning of mind control. They forgot all the lessons that are taught to them. And they somehow started thinking that their quality of meditation depends on a cat. And the second reaction was of the monasteries and other academicians. Now, because the other temples saw that uh, Mayukagi's temple started getting rid of cats, even they started the same because even they were tired of taking care of the cats. So even they began to eliminate cats from classes. After 20 years, new academicians started bringing out their publications and this time the titles were even more amusing. They discussed the importance of meditating without a cat or even interesting titles such as Balancing the Zen Universe by Willpower Alone without the help of animals. So you see, they made this mistake once again. Now they started making theories on how people can survive even without cats. Now it's a very funny story because so many things happened because of an event that was actually nothing. Imagine the chaos created by just one cat. So thinking about how it all started, we can only say that one must always think for themselves. One must always analyze what is taught to them and go ahead only if they agree with it. Now this video doesn't ask you to be rebellious in everything that is taught to you. You know, if there is a ritual of driving a car with closed doors and somehow some great human doesn't agree with that and decides to drive the car with open doors, then I'd say that I'd be really interested in seeing the outcome of the decision. So this story is not about being a rebel to everything. It's just a satire on people and society and how they blindly follow anyone whom they idolize. So absorb this lesson and try to apply it in your daily lives and you'll do much better. So I hope you like this story. Do share this with your friends and family. Keep watching out this space for more interesting videos. Thank you so much.